Hello, welcome to a project flight fare prediction. In this project, we'll be predicting the correct flight fare for any journey using different machine learning approach and then automated machine learning approach. What is the motivation behind this project? We have often heard travelers saying flight tickets are often very unpredictable and very hard to guess. You also have observed by yourself that it is very difficult to predict the prices of a flight ticket. They can vary from day to day, from class to class and it's, it's become very difficult to predict whether what a price will be for a flight. Now, it is also often observed that if one might see a price today and checks the same flight price tomorrow, it's a whole different story. It has become a very big problem and if we can do something to ease it, it will be such a relief. What we can do about it is we can create a machine learning model which will help us in predicting the prices of a flight on inputting some of the attributes. These attributes can include then what is the name of the airline and what is the class of the journey and what is the time of the journey, different source, destination and many other attributes. We'll be using a data set in which Various airlines prices between the months of March and June of 29 are provided between various cities. We'll be using this data set to feed our machine learning model and then eventually to our automated machine learning model. Let me tell you what AutoML is. AutoML enables developers with limited machine learning expertise to train high quality models specific to their business needs. Which means that if you don't have much knowledge about machine learning, you can use automated machine learning to do all the machine learning work which a data scientist do which comes like testing different models, hyper tuning them, checking their accuracy and selecting the best model. This all work is done with the help of AutoML. There are numerous amount of automated machine learning tech, uh, libraries available but we'll be using, we'll be using AutoSQLearn in this project. Let's have an intro, brief introduction about AutoSQLearn. AutoSQLearn frees a machine learning user from algorithm selection and hyperparameter tuning. It leverages recent advantages in Bayesian optimization, meta learning, and ensemble construction. You have, you all have heard about the scikit-learn library, the, or the sklearn library. This is basically the automated part of this. As you can see in the figure, we'll be providing a data set. AutoSQLearn will do all the model building and hyperparameter tuning thing uh, work for us and we'll be able to predict the results. Now, there are two types. The one is the classification AutoSQLearn and second is the AutoSQLearn regression. Classification as suggested from the word, it is used when we are solving a classification problem like the churn prediction or, or predicting whether a customer is a fraud or not. Here, the problem which we are having is a regression problem, so we'll be using auto and regression. I'll be telling you in the further tutorial how to use it. Now, what will be the timeline of our project? We'll be first doing the data analysis part in order to analyze our data, understand the data, if how our data is related. Then we'll be shifting to the feature engineering part. In this, we'll be doing different operations like one hot encoding, label encoding, standardization, and all the different data pre-processing techniques. We'll be also selecting the best features. Moving on, we'll be doing model building using the machine learning algorithms. I'll be showing you which machine learning algorithm I'll be using and how we will hyper tune it. Then eventually, in the last, we'll be shifting to automated machine learning in which we'll be using the auto and library to do all the work which we have done above in a few lines of code. So at the end of this project, you'll be able to learn all these things and implement on your own. So let's begin. Hello. So now let's begin with a project. A project name is Flight Fair Prediction using machine learning and auto -escalate. As I've already given you the introduction about the project, this is the context which I've, context which I've taken from the literature. Uh, I have already told you why this project is important and what is the motivation behind it. I have told you what is the timeline of our project that is the data analysis, feature engineering, feature selection, model building using machine learning, model building using auto -escalate. So now let's start with our project by importing the different libraries and our data set. Now, Let's import the different libraries which will be helpful in feature extraction, data analysis and different procedures. We have imported pandas as PD, numpy as NP, matplotlib for visualization 
and Seaborn also for visualization. Now, as we are working in a Google Colab environment, there is a different procedure to import our data. What you have to do is first you have to mount your Google Drive, Google Drive uh, into this environment. How you can do that is you can just simply click, click in this icon. It will do. Uh, it will mount your drive. You have to execute this. You'll execute this. And what it'll do, I've, I've already mounted my drive, so it's showing the device uh, drive already mounted. If you have not mounted the drive, what you can do is it'll create, it'll give you a link. You have to click there, you have to authorize your account, and you just have to copy paste the link which will be provided to you in the next window, and then your drive will be shown something like here. As you can see, drive, and these are all the different all the different things which are present uh, in my drive is shown here. Now, if I want to read a data, what I'll do is I'll be importing my that, that file into my Google Drive and then I'll be finding it here and let's say I have to read my flight data. So this is my CSV file. I'll be copying the path. I'll be pasting it here and I'll be executing df.pd.readcsv. I'll be executing it and then I'll be seeing the same. Now, as you can see, this is my train data. I have the price information. Now, I also have my test data. So I'll be reading the same by doing the same method. I'll be copying the path of my test data. The only thing you have to do is you have to import your file into a Google Drive, which is necessary for doing uh, further processes. Now, well, how, what you can see that this is a test data, which has no price info. For the sake of simplicity, I'll be combining both of the data set. Uh, what you can do is you can do all the things in your test data, uh, in, the, in your train data and then predict using your test data. But what I'll be doing is I'll be, com I'll be combining my both train and test data for the purpose of feature engineering so that I don't have to do the feature engineering process for both the data separately. Um, so I'll be for the sake of simplicity, I have created a data frame total df and I have combined both the data set into my total df part. Now as you can see if I'll write total df dot tail it will it will show me the uh, all the data set which is present at the end which is uh, which is my test data set. As you can see the price is nan here because it don't have any price and as I'll see total df dot head it will show me the uh, all the data which is present in the which is in the present which means the train data you can see that there is the price column because this is my train data when i see to the total shape as you can see this is a quite large data set which has around 13354 rows and 11 columns now uh, understanding our data so these are the different uh, size of the training data and this is the size of test data we have combined both our data that's why we are it is showing 13,000 otherwise the training data is 10,683 and test data is 2,671. Now these are the different features our data set has. Airline is the name of the airline Indigo, Air India, Jet Airways. Then the date of journey is the date of the journey which the passenger has to do. The source is from where the passenger starts his journey. Same as the destination from where the passenger will end his journey. The route, the route is the main uh, route that taken by the flight. The it means that the different uh, if it's a direct flight, it will there will be no route in between. And if it's a halting flight, then there will be different uh, routes. And uh, the next one is our. Uh, the departure time, arrival time, duration of the flight, the total stops. As I said, that if there is a halt, then it will be uh, showing the different stops. Then additional info that this is the additional information by the flight. If there is something special, there is something uh, economic, economic class or business class. These are the information. Then, then the next is the last is the price. This is our dependent variable which we have to predict. So this was a brief info introduction of our data. In the next section, we'll be doing the data analysis part. Hello. So now let's begin with our data analysis part. In this section, we'll be observing our data that how our data is related with the price. We'll be seeing the different features, different attributes and how they are related with the price. So now let's start with the airline. We'll be seeing that how many different airlines are there and which is in abundant. Now, as you can see, 
the there are different airlines like jet airways indigo air india multiple carriers spice etc what i did is i simply use the command command df airline dot value counts what value counts will do is it will give me the sum of the different passengers which are present in my different airlines these are the total this is my train data this if you will sum it it will be around 10000 because this is my train data i have taken my train data i have selected as you, as you will remember i have i have stored my train data in df variable in order to, for the sake of data analysis i am using only my train data now i can see that what is the relation between my airline and my price what i'll be doing i'll using a cat plot which is present inside the c1 library it will be displaying me different box plots uh, collective box plots with all the different airlines so from this data we can see that jet airways business jet airways business is the costliest of all it has the highest quartile range and the average is also the highest around 55000 and for the rest of the airlines the average is quite similar like for the jet airways multiple carriers and air in india it is almost the same and uh, then we can see that for the spice jet the spice jet is the least costly of all this is these are all the box plots i hope you are all familiar with what box plot is it will be showing me the outliers and the 75th percentile 75th percent quartile and the median and the average values now i'll what i can do next is i can see what how the price is distributed from the source of the destination first i'll see what are the different sources in this data so this these are like the delhi kolkata bangalore bombay chennai we can see how the price depends on the source city and i'll be using the same cat plot uh, as you can see the average price is not much uh, varied Uh, although in the bangalore side the higher quartile range is quite high around 60000 right and uh, based, say, comparing with the other cities like kolkata bombay and chennai they are quite less the uh, bangalore and delhi have quite high quartile range which means that they have a uh, quite uh, some of the data some of the flights are of higher range in from bangalore and delhi now if we do the same for the destination part what will be seeing that there are different destination cities of destination and uh, if we see the plot okay it's also similar for the same in this new delhi cochin and bangalore almost have the same plot which means that they all most have the same prices well, all the only difference is the new delhi as the have the high quartile highest quartile range which is, these are the outliers you see the different uh, things so which which means that there are some exception there are some of the flights which can be seen in the additional info column which are quite high um, if we exclude these then it is almost the same and the uh, kol being the kolkata and delhi with the least of the price if the if they are the destination now these are the different durations so it shows us the 110683 why is this because it is telling it is obvious that every flight will have a different duration so if there are 10683 records there will be 10683 durations if i want to see each of the duration what i can do is i'll simply erase the sum command and then it will show me what are the different duration but i am not interested in that because it doesn't give me any significance i just used it to find out that Uh, is there isn't there any null values or not although we can do it from using the simple command is null but uh, i only used it for experimental purposes so now this was the data analysis part there is not much uh, in compare what you can do is you can also see how the price is depending on the different total number of stops like uh, when you'll see when you uh, when you'll see the data now if you will see you can also see if what is the price dependency on the total number of stops or the additional info which is given if the if there is some extra privileges given in a flight the price will be high you can do this as the your additional assignment and include it in your project so this was the data analysis part in the next section which is the most important one we'll be doing the feature engineering part in that part we'll be and converting different categorical variables into numeric and doing the label encoding part which is the most important part before the model building so this was uh, this concludes the data analysis section and then we have, we'll be uh, we'll be doing data 
फ्यूचर इंजीनियरिंग एंड फ्यूचर सिलेक्शन पार्ट इन द नेक्स्ट सेक्शन हेलो वेलकम टू अ फ्यूचर इंजीनियरिंग सेक्शन इन दिस सेक्शन विल बी विल बी कन्वर्टिंग अर डेटा इन टू अ सर्टेन फॉर्म सो दैट अ मॉडल कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शन आफ्टर द मॉडल बिल्डिंग इन दिस सेक्शन विल बी कन्वर्टिंग डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ न्यू अल्फाबेटिकल डेटा और कॉन्टीन्यूस वेरिएबल इन टू अ सर्टेन न्यूमेरिक वैल्यू सो दैट अ मॉडल कैन इंटरप्रेट इट बेटर सो फर्स्ट हैव अ लुक एट लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट अ डेटा अगेन एज यू कैन सी दिस इज अर डेटा these are all in different formats uh, these are all are basically object types we have to convert this in uh, will be converting this into some categorical variables based on the attribute so first after when seeing the date of journey as you can see date of journey present in the format 24032019 what we'll do we'll be splitting we'll be taking out the date month and year separately well, you can also do this by the command which is present in the Python that is dt dt command dt dot day dt dot month it is also give you the same but what I will do I am splitting it here on the basis of this slash column so when I use this command it is split this the whole date on the basis of this slash and I am retaining out my first string and second string then third string now if I will see my data as you can see I have three new columns date month and year. Now I'll drop this date of journey column. Now, if I see my data types, as you can see, these three columns are of the object data type. What I want is I want them to be the integer as they are the integer. So I'll convert them. I'll convert this their data type into integer. Now, if I'll see, as you can see, the data type is converted to int sixty four. Let's have a look at our data. Now the date of the journey is dropped, and I have the three new columns. Now what happens is this is there is one column additional info. We don't know much information about it, so we'll see how important this is and what is the impact of it in the price. So that we'll decide if we have to keep it or we should drop it. So these are the different additional info present, and these are the number of passenger which are opted them. Uh, now we'll see. what is the what is the their impact on the price as you can see the business class is only having the largest impact uh, because uh, for obvious reasons and the no info and the other things are quite same but if we drop this we lose some information so we'll keep the additional info and we'll convert it into some categorical variables in the next section now arrival time when see if you see the arrival time it is present the time and the in some of the uh, some of the rows it there is some date so we don't want it we'll separate it the time and the date and we'll only keep the time so what we'll do i'll split it on the basis of that space and i'll um, i'll take the first string so after this as you can see the arrival time only my time is there now because i don't want the date because this is a column of time now these are there is a column named total stops now total stops as you can see let's see how many total stops are there okay see one stop there are 7056 7056 flights non stop are 4343 flights and second stop third stop and fourth stop now what i'll do what i'll do i'll also all fill all the null values i'll i'll all fill i'll fall if there is any null values i'll fill it with one stop and then i'll see that if there are any null values present as you can see there are no null values present in the total stops now there what happens is i have to, these are all in the numeric value but there is one uh, one variable one attribute that is non stop i have to convert this into a numeric value what i'll do i'll do i'll write a code in which total day i'll replace the non stop with zero stop now when i'll see it now as you can see the non stop is replaced with a zero stop and now what i'll do is i don't want this stop i only want the numeric value so i'll uh, i'll split it with the basis of this space and i'll return only the first string that is the numeric value and also i i'll store it in a different uh, different column named stop now when i'll see it 
as you can see this is a different column stop and total stop i have i don't have i don't need total steps right now so i'll drop it as you can see that i have dropped total stop and i have new column name stop in which 0 1 2 are described they are describing how many stops the flight is taken now the same thing we'll convert the data type as the data type which is assigned to it before is the object data type will convert it into int now as you can see this is the int data type now we'll uh, similarly we'll do the different uh, uh, we'll convert all the different variables uh, this was the this was the first part of the feature engineering we'll proceed uh, we'll convert to different variables in the next part hello welcome to a second video of a feature engineering part in this video, we will be continuing with where, where we left off previously. Now, as you can see, uh, in the arrival time, we will be starting with the arrival time. What we do, what we will do, we will separate the arrival time with the hours and the minutes. We will create a new area, new column, which is the arrival hour and the arrival minute. We will separate it with these two, uh, two, uh, two dots and I will retrieve the first uh, in the arrival hour and the second in the arrival minute. And we will just convert it into an int type and we will drop the arrival time call. Okay. Now when we will see our data, as you can see this is the new column arrival hour and this is the new column arrival minute. We have dropped the arrival time. Now we will do the same for the departure time. As, as you see, we don't want it to be together. We want the different hours and we want the different minutes so that it is uh, it is better for the model. Now, this is, there is a column called route. In this, it is showing, that, showing us that what is the route taken by the flight. If it is a non-stop flight, there will be two routes. And it has if it has flights, if it has stop, this means that this has two stops. Uh, CCU starting point, then IXR, BVI, then the destination is BLR. So this these are the route taken. Now what we'll do, we'll separate each route uh, and we'll store it in a different column. We'll split it with this arrow and the space, and we'll split uh, we'll store it in root one, root two, root three. Now what happens is if we'll see so the different root will have some none values right the this has only two root so what will happen to the root 3 root 4 and root 5 they'll have the null values so what we'll replace that that null values with none now when we'll see a data now as you can see the root are mapped with this uh, root 1 root 2 values and if for if we take the example of first data the first source is blr then the root 2 is del del there are no other roots so it has assigned be none same for the second the first is ccu second is ixr third is bbi fourth is blr and the fifth one is none similarly it has mapped for all my all my data now i'll simply drop the root column and the duration column also because each flight is having different duration it serves me no purpose uh, and uh, no value so that i'll so i'll drop the both of the columns then i'll see now let's see how good my data looks right i have uh, filtered all my data now i'll see if there is any null values in my data or not so basically there are no null values in my data the only thing it is showing is my price value this is actually not the null values these are my test data in test data as you remember there was no price column what i am doing is i am taking my test data also into my train data what you can do is you can separate your test data and your train data uh, and your train data but uh, uh, in this case i will be taking both of them the, now what I'll do, I will fill my price column with the mean of the price, with the mean of the price which is present in the train data. Now when I'll see, there are no null values, it is zero. And uh, if I'll have a look at my data, this is my data where I have everything, the price and all the all the all the columns. Now what i'll do i'll use a label encoder what a label can encoder is it will map the labels like for the airline it will map a certain value for this airline and for the routes now this is one method 
but for the categorical variables what we can do is we can use one hot encoding we can perform one hot encoding one hot encoding is a method in which various dummies are created for example if i'll perform the one hot encoding in the airline section so there are different airlines so the it will create that number of columns similar to the total number of airlines and it will assign the value for example in my first column it there is indigo indigo it will assign one for a in indigo and the rest will be zero this is a very good method of feature engineering and this is performed to obtain a higher accuracy i have not done it here you will simply you can simply do it on yourself i hope you know it or if you don't you can simply google it and you you will find out how you can do one hot encoding you just have to use uh, the get dummies command and it will perform it will automatically perform but there is one disadvantage of one hot encoding because suppose if you have a very large number of categories if in the airlines there are around 15 to 10 uh, 10 to 15 airlines what will do it will create 10 to 15 number of columns which will create many number of dimensions which can lead to a curse of dimensionality and eventually are overfitting of the data so uh, but in this case we can perform one hot encoding as there as our uh, variables in any of the attributes is not much higher than 5 we you can easily perform one hot encoding as your assignment now performing the label encoder i have imported label encoder from sklearn.preprocessing i'll be as i'll be doing the label encoder in these things in the categorical variables and the route the airline source destination additional info route as the different routes i'll be doing fit and transform in the same line and now when i'll see my data now see how beautifully our data has done uh, all the variable airline source destination routes are converted into some category into some labels as i said in the previous section now the same i have written you can also perform the one hot encoding now there is one another column which is the year this is same for all because as you remember we i told you that the data is only for the same year so we there is no use to keep this column we'll drop the year column now our data is ready now the final thing what we have to do before model building is we'll select the features there are different features we'll select the feature which is the most important that i'll show you in the next section hello all welcome to a feature selection section in this section we will see what all the features we can use and which feature is the most important so that we'll use only those features for uh, for developing our model now the first thing we'll do is we'll separate we'll we will separate our data into independent and dependent variables now what i have done i have created two x and y columns in the two data frame basically in the x data frame i have dropped the price column from the total da that is basically my independent variables and in the y i have only taken the price column that is which is basically my dependent variable i'll train this on the basis of with with these variables now when i'll see this is my x column okay and this is my y now what i'll do is i'll import one thing which is lasso and select from model select from model is a criteria is a method for feature selection in this i'll give a parameter i will give a parameter on the basis of that it will select the model the parameter which i have taken is the lasso okay now if you just see what lasso is in statistics and machine learning lasso is a regression analysis method that can perform both variable selection and regularization what is do it will perform an analysis and tell me and find out that which model has the best uh, uh, which model has the best importance the first we are before training the data will split our data into the train and test data x to next text now let us fit our model what i'll be doing select from model i'll be passing out the lasso command i'll be selecting alpha value is 0.005 it is always better that if you select a alpha value uh, a low a low alpha value is generally better what is saying select from model is not defined okay sorry i have not executed it now 
see the bar it is fitted now we will fit we fit this model with a train data x train and y train now as you can see it is all it has given me all the pa parameters which it have taken now i'll use a command get support get support what it will do it will tell me it give me a array of the features it has selected it is given true and the feature it is not selected it will be giving false but in this case it has selected all the features so i'll be getting the column names see it has selected all the features uh, now what we can do if you want to view it visually we'll import one model which is known as extra tree regression what it will do will fit the data in this and what we'll do now see it has fitted the data we'll create a gg plot in this we'll create a, um, a plot which is known as feature importance in this what this extra tree regressor will do it will provide us with the different features and their importance and we'll we can plot it in the form of a gg plot now as you can see this is their importance and this is the features as you can see root 3 date stop time this are all the importance feature which is estimated by our extra tree classifier model so this is was our feature engine feature selection part this in this i showed you how you can select your features on the basis uh, of different parameters and uh, this uh, you can do it in different data sets and try out and find out different things now in the next section we'll be building our model using the machine learning technique hello all Welcome to our next section. In this section, we'll finally build a model using the machine learning algorithm and the algorithm we'll be using in this case is the random forest regressor. In case if you don't know about random forest, random forest is basically an ensemble te technique. It is a collection of various decision trees and uh, in the, it is of two types the random forest classifier and the random forest regressor. It, so this is a regression problem. We'll be using the random forest regressor. We'll import it from the sklearn.ensemble library and uh, we'll just uh, fit the model. Now, as you can see, these are the different parameters it has taken. It has taken the basic parameters, the default parameters which are present. We'll be hyper tuning it in the, in the above also. Now, when we we'll fit our data, we'll directly predict it with the X test. Now, we'll see the score. As you can see, this is our training score and this is our test score. Now, what we can do is we can plot a distribution plot. In this, I'll we'll be saying how the we'll be doing y test minus y predict. What it will do, it will create a distribution plot of the values of the of the distribution. As you can see, the zero is in the abundance. If the zero is in the abundance, it means that the the difference of our predicted value and the actual value is zero which is a quite good thing and this is normally distributed and zero is in the abundance which we can also create the same as a scatter plot of the different y test and y pred values as you can see this is our y test and y pred values and these are the sum of the various sum of the values which are like the outliers and which are not correctly predicted we can also create um, we can also see what are the different scores this is our me score msc square rmsc square this is our metric score R2 score generally our RT square of 0.75 is considered a good score and um, this is our score now this was our model in the uh, in the normal primitive algorithm my random forest model we can hyper tune it how we can do it we'll hyper tune our model with the help of randomized search CV. now there are two types uh, two uh, hyper unit there is one thing called grid search cv and the another one is random randomized search cv in grid search cv what happens is it own uh, it searches the data in a particular label like there will be a certain folds if i use the grid search cv it will only it will take the data take that data and then not repeat the same process with that data but in randomized search cv what happens is it takes the data in folds so my data will get again and again trained which is quite which is quite good quite a good thing so i'll be using randomized search cv here and what i'll do i'll imp uh, i'll tell all the parameters these are the simple parameters which are taken which are uh, used in the random forest you can have a document a documentation look of random forest and you will understand what this is what i did is i use the n estimator part in this i created a different value integer values from 0 to 
1500 i have taken number of est n the n estimators how uh, estimators are okay then the next is the max features the same for the max depth these are the different samples lifts and sample sleeve these are the values which i want to give in my randomized search cv model so that it uh, so that it will uh, carry out these variables and tell me that what is the best model now see i have uh, done randomized search cv then estimator is reg rf obviously the random uh, random forest model the param distribution is this the scoring which i have stored in this and iterator is the 50 and cv is 5 these are the different other variables for randomized search cv now i'll fit it okay now it will fit for the other uh, different folds now what happens it will take a certain time because it will be fitting many number of uh, parameters uh, many number of parameters what i did is i have already fitted it i have already fitted it it will take around 10 to 10 to 12 minutes to check out all the different parameters and from that what i got is i i got my best parameters at the n estimator is 700 minimum sample split is 3 and mag and the uh, sorry split is 3 and mag minimum sample leaf is 1 max feature is squared and max depth is max depth is 15 these were the best parameters which i obtained what i'll do is i'll just stop it okay i'll stop it you can continue it you can continue it uh, and uh, it will take around 10 to 12 minutes to give you the best parameter you can use the command rf random dot best parameters to see what will what were the best parameters you can simply fit your model with this now i'll fit this model and predict it see this is this, this got fitted with the same parameters which i have given Now I'll create the same distribution in scatter plot. The distribution plot I have created. See, this is my distribution plot. Okay, most of the values is my in the zero section. Most of the values in my zero section. This means that my model is performed well. This is my scatter plot. Okay, this is my scatter plot. And these are my scores. These are my score. This is my ME score, MSC score, RMSC score. Now this was the part of our model building using the random forest. That's the machine learning technique. Now what we have to do in the next section, we'll be using the automated machine learning to see how we can do all of this with the help of auto escalon. I'll be discussing what auto machine learning is and what auto escalon library is in the next section. Welcome to our last section of this project, which is model building using automated machine learning. So I have, as I have discussed in the introduction video, what automated machine learning is, it will automate all the machine learning, model building and hyper tuning part for us. We'll be using auto escalon. There are different libraries such as teapot, auto escalon, auto kera, spy Carrot, but we'll be using, I'll be demonstrating you this project with the help of auto escalon. Now, Auto Escalon frees a machine learning user from algorithm selection and hyperparameter tuning. So previously in the video, previous sections we saw that we used the Escalon library in that we used the random forest model. Now what in this it will do, it will run over all the different models it have in the auto, in the Escalon library and give us the best model with the hyperparameters for our project. So now, in order to uh, install your auto escalon, you have to use these three commands. Make sure you, uh, you use these three commands in order. First, you have to install SIGY, then the Cython NumPy, then the auto escalon. Then only you will be able to run this in your collab environment. It will take around one to two minutes to get run. I have already installed it. So it is all, that's why it is saying requirement already satisfied. Now, you just have to import auto escalon. Then you will import auto escalon as rig dot reg regression as rig. Now auto escalon has two types, right? One is the classification and one is the regression. Classification is for classification part. And regression is for regression part. It will import all the library, all the libraries, all the models it have for the regression as rig. This is the demonstration of how I will, how we have to load our data, but we'll be using the extrain data. Remember, auto escalon only automates 
the machine learning part machine learning model building part the pre processing part you have to do if you will pass the raw data in your model it will cause your model to fail because it will contain many numerical data unstructured data and the object type data which will cause the model to fail the pre processing part you only have to do so i'm using the same data which i pre processed for my previous section that is the random forest section as you can see this is my extrain data and uh, this is uh, i am defining my model now i am defining my model like auto ml the reg which i imported and auto ml regressor time left for this task now what is this this is basically saying me that it will take around 120 seconds to fit my model now i have used this as a time constraint you can remove that and run your model it will run for around 5 to 10 minutes i have if i'll be using 180 second then it will run for around 120 180 second then it will fit my model according to that you can use it you can see how my how much time it takes until fit your model more properly and it will give you a higher accuracy now it will fit your model it will take around 120 seconds i have already fitted it now what we can do we can printer printer letter board now as you can see these are the this is nine nine is the model id which means that more than nine models were taken into account and tested and we have the top 3 according to the cost function as you can see our main aim of our model building is to reduce the cost function right so the model which is having the least cost function is having the first rank which is the gradient boosting and ensemble weight is 0.56 than the random forest then the gradient boosting with ensemble weight 0.30 these are the duration which it took i can also describe my models right i can also describe my models as you can see it is describing it is showing my all the my top 3 models and what are the things which were used in coding choice and the categorical transformation and all the different things okay all the different things which are used see this is my Uh, this is my pipeline this basically showing my pipeline which is used the regressor pipeline which is used in all the different models now what we'll do i'll predict i'll predict my data with the x test data see this is my predicted i have predicted my model these are my results now i'll simply use the same distribution plot again and the scatter plot which i used to see the accuracy above see this is my distribution plot and most of the values most of the values lie in my zero region which means that i my model is correct uh, model is predicted most of the values right because why zero because i am seeing a distribution plot about y test minus y prediction to so the values the more the less the difference more is my corrected value this is my scatter plot of my y prediction and y and my test as you can see these are great straight line and this is a cluster which means which means that my model is uh, quite good and quite correctly predicted now these are my matrix which i have imported these are the different mean square error root mean square error these are my different accuracy now this is how, how this is a small demonstration how you can use auto scale learn for your model i have used uh, you can uh, experiment it with it you can remove the time barrier and you can see how good the model performs and what is the accuracy this was a simple demonstration all the notebooks and files and data will be provided to you you can experiment it you can see how you can create different models or with the same data you can create a, a better model with more accuracy by experimenting more by exploring in the auto sql and library you just have you have you have type in google auto sql and dot regression it will give you the documentation see different parameters and experiment it with it this was all about this project thank you